Mark and Debbie, thank you for being here today. And we're talking about Defy the Darkness, the, the film that is on this DVD. And there's a lot of exciting work that went on behind the scenes, but tell us, tell us the heart of this thing. What, what was behind Defy the Darkness? Tell, tell us how this got started. John, as I travel throughout the country, I see people amusing themselves to death, as Neil Postman coined the phrase. We are um, living in a culture where people are being sedated by images, and uh, we live in a relativistic society. There's no longer absolute truth. Everything has been reduced, you know, and nothing is sacred anymore. Yeah. And I, I think for me, I wanted to do infuse into the culture something that's better, um, not to protest or boycott. I want to be able to be a cultivator and a creator so that it will draw and attract the culture um, to awaken people, to awaken the moral conscience of our nation. And I think that um, there can be really a great awakening, you know, through stories that transform, stories that are embedded with God's Word, uh, stories that... Uh, make you rethink your own story mm -hmm. so that you can start writing a new chapter. Mark, we were talking earlier about, about this, this film that we did. and We, we called it a movie because the, from, the, from the onset, mm -hmm. we wanted to do something special. We didn't want to do just a standard talking head promo. What really hit me, you said something to me, just, just really impressed me. You said, I want to do something that inspires people. And that really touched me. It was, it was beyond just promoting Lamplighter, which we want to do, but I want to do something that's really just, just sticks with people. Tell us more about like the heart of that. What, what was behind that? One of the most difficult decisions that I had to make in this whole process mm -hmm. was to really reflect, what, what is the purpose of this film? Mm -hmm. Is this film about generating support for our endeavor, mm -hmm. or is this film first and foremost about telling a story so that when the people hear this, they themselves realize, hey, you know what, that's where I am. I am in a dark chapter of my life. And I, I am now inspired to endure what I'm going through. Uh, there, someone may be watching this and have, they may be thinking that, you know, I can't handle this marriage anymore, I'm out. Or I don't know if I can handle this as a parent with this child. Or I just lost my job. Mm -hmm. Whatever the dark chapter there is in life that someone's facing, I believe that first and foremost for me, this film was about giving people hope. This film is about giving people the pen to start writing again. I'm going to go for another chapter. I'm going to, I'm going to defy the darkness in my life right now, and I'm going to endure this. I'm going to embrace the pain for God's greater blessing. My dad, the greatest father in the world, but he didn't know Christ as a Savior. And uh, my dad loved Debbie like his, his own daughter. and. Uh, and so when he got sick, um, um, that was devastating for all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. But something took place just a few months before he got sick. Um, I got a phone call, mm -hmm. and the phone call was from my dad. Here my dad is, this self-made man. Everyone loves him. Mm -hmm. He has the greatest marriage on earth, but he doesn't know Christ. Mm -hmm. And he calls me up one August, and he calls me and says, Mark, he says, I'm, I'm reading one of your Lamplighter books. And he said, I never realized how far away I was from God. Wow. And uh, do you remember that morning? Yes, I do. Wow. It had been years that we've been trying to get him to read Lamplighter books. So and you're, you're, you're publishers, and, yes. and, and, but you haven't got your own dad to read the books. Right. So that's yeah. kind of funny. Okay. And he finally started reading them. And we were, we were driving, I think we were in Pennsylvania, and he calls on the speakerphone. And he said, Mark, Mark, I just have to, have to tell you, Christie's old organ. I just finished reading it, and it was wonderful. And he said, "Buried in the snow, Mark. I never knew how far away I was from God." Oh, it wow. was so exciting to hear him. He said, "I'm learning about God for the first time in my life." Mm -hmm. Wow. And then, and then it was just shortly after that we got the phone call. So here he is in the hospital in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. So when I get there, I walk into the emergency room. My dad's got the oxygen mask on. He pulls it off, and uh, and he just starts bawling like a baby. I said, are, are you all right? And he looks at me just with all these tears, and he says, I'm going to home sweet home. He says, I know Jesus is my Savior. Mm, yeah. That's powerful. Just, just real quick, just briefly, what, what does Lamplighter do? Um, well, there's three, three parts of our ministry. The first part is the, um, the publishing part. Mm -hmm. um, we find rare books from the 19th, 18th, 17th centuries. People send me these stories from all over the world, and I read them. And if the book represents the character of God, 
Um, it uh, has that theme of, you know, suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and if it has that theme in it, mm -hmm. and it literally changes me, mm -hmm. um, drives me to my knees, and, and, I, and I cry out to God, um, then I'll, uh, I'll reprint that book. How do you think, like Lamplighter as a whole, um, how, is it, how is it touching moms out there? How's it touching wives and all that? Well, you know, I think, as, again, as the kids get older, you're always looking for significant other people to just impart something into your kids' lives when, when you seem to take a little bit more of a back seat. And Almost like mentors and stuff like mm -hmm. that, yeah. And that's what these stories do. Mm -hmm. they, the stories are mentors the, is what you're the saying. The stories are mentors. The kids um, in the stories, they're not all perfect. Um, they make wrong choices. They suffer the consequences of the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. They reap the benefits of good choices. Um, I just think that's as important as a mom, you know, to see that you know they're reading good books. You can't always monitor what the kids are reading. It's mm -hmm. very time consuming and just to know that they're they're reading books that have great role models, mm -hmm. heroes and heroines that they yeah. can emulate is is very uh, comforting for yeah. a mom. I remember one morning we were in a Borders bookstore. She was reviewing for me um, the wide, wide world. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I was crying in the bookstore. <laughs> oh, what happened? Tell, me, tell us what happened. It was just, um, it was thinking about the mother who knew that she was going to have to leave her daughter. She was dying. And um, I just put myself in her place mm. and what it would have been like. And it was just so relevant and so realistic that it really moved me during that time right in the store. Oh, was, wow. Wow. That's great. I guess she had mascara just kind of like <laughs> streaming down her, down, her, down her face. Yeah. You've read some of the testimonies or some, can you tell us just, just the things, and maybe even from a mother's point of view or, or a wife's point of view, do you remember just some of the stories you've been hearing or the testimonies or emails you've been getting? Can you, you know, tell us? We, we get emails, we get testimonies every day. Mm -hmm. um, teenagers mm -hmm. will write to us about how these stories are changing their lives. And yeah. you know, you think of teenagers today, and you think, what are, first of all, what are they doing reading a book written in the 1800s, and then enjoying it, and then seeing that it really is having an impact on their lives? Wow, that, that's incredible.